Have you noticed lately how there's been an explosion in the variety of sparkling waters out there? With flavors like La Croix Peach Pear and Polar's limited edition Blackberry Citron and Unicorn Kisses? There's sure to be something for everyone. But recent articles in the popular media with sensational titles like The Sad Truth About Seltzer and Flavored Waters Including La Croix are eroding your teeth seem to suggest that they might not be so good for you. Is sparkling water a healthy choice? <sighs> hey Nourishable, Dr. Lara here. Healthcare advocates have long been encouraging Americans to reduce their consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages because they increase the risk of obesity and chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes. The consumer desire for a healthy soda alternative has birthed the flavored sparkling water market, and there's huge demand. According to Euromonitor, beverage consumption trends show drinking bottled water, which includes sparkling water, is increasing and has now surpassed soda. It seems intuitive that drinking a zero calorie sparkling water would be good for you. Even the labels tout it as being both sugar free and guilt free. But is it healthy? Let's delve into the details. Sparkling water, also known as carbonated or seltzer water where I live in the northeastern US, is water with dissolved carbon dioxide gas under pressure, yielding delightful fizzy bubbles. It can be unflavored or flavored to yield a low calorie or zero calorie beverage. Consuming sparkling water in place of soda is certainly healthier for several reasons. First, you're skipping the added sugars, so you're eliminating those rapid spikes in blood glucose and excess calories. Many flavored sparkling waters use natural flavors, which are produced by distilling and extracting compounds from plant and animal products, yielding aroma and flavor without additional calories. Sodas provide a lovely sugar bath for the bacteria that are living in your mouth. When these bacteria break down the sugar, they produce acid, which can erode your tooth enamel and cause cavities. Since sparkling waters are sugar-free, they don't contain any food for that oral bacteria. High cola consumption has been associated with weaker bones, but the culprits seem to be the phosphoric acid and caffeine in colas, not the carbonation. So far, it looks like sparkling water is a great choice, but there could be some potential downsides to replacing plain old tap water with sparkling water. When carbon dioxide is added to sparkling water, it creates carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. High school chemistry flashback! The acidity of a solution is represented by its pH. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, with a pH of 7 being neutral. A pH lower than 7 indicates an acid, and a pH higher than 7 indicates a base. Studies have shown that acidic beverages with a pH of 4 or lower can cause tooth erosion and beverages with a pH of 3 or lower are considered extremely erosive. Unflavored sparkling waters generally have a pH around 5.5, so they're not acidic enough to risk enamel erosion. I was reading through these sensational articles about flavored sparkling water being terrible for your teeth with a fine tooth comb, and what I found was that the studies they cited hadn't measured the pH of any of the flavored sparkling waters that are currently on the market. Instead, the writers of these articles assumed that the measured pH values of non-carbonated flavored water, such as Sobe Life Water and Dasani Strawberry, would be the same as the pH values of the flavored sparkling waters currently on the market. And that's a pretty big assumption. So I decided I would measure the pH myself. I designed a simple experiment to determine the pH values of both flavored and unflavored sparkling waters available at my local grocery store. After picking up my favorite flavors and polling my friends for their top pick, I ended up with 26 varieties of both flavored and unflavored sparkling water. I measured the pH by using a digital pH meter that I calibrated immediately prior to the experiment. Each sparkling water was measured in triplicate immediately after opening. For comparison, I also measured the pH of my tap water, lemon juice, and Coke Zero as an example of soda. Drum roll please, the results! The most acidic solutions measured were the lemon juice with a pH of 3.1 and the Coke Zero with a pH of 3.2. None of the flavored or unflavored sparkling waters were as acidic as the Coke Zero. So this again supports that choosing sparkling water over soda is a healthier choice with respect to erosive potential. Using the criteria of a pH less than 4.0 as being erosive, and a pH greater than 4.0 as having minimal erosive potential, 
Six of the sparkling waters tested are considered erosive, with pHs from 3.6 to 3.9, and the other 20 are considered minimally erosive, with pHs ranging from 4.1 to 5.6. Sparkling waters flavored with fruit juice, such as Spindrift Blackberry and Orange Mango, were the most acidic, both with a pH of 3.6, and that's because fruit juice is naturally acidic. The least acidic sparkling waters were the mineral waters, San Pellegrino with a pH of 5.3 and Perrier Lime with a pH of 5.6. The other 18 non-mineral sparkling waters had pHs ranging from 4.1 to 4.6, so they're considered minimally erosive, but still pretty close to that acid enamel eroding threshold. Surprisingly, two of the three unflavored sparkling waters tested were more acidic than pH of 5.5, so based on my test, they shouldn't be considered differently from other flavored sparkling waters. Check out the video description below for all the details of the results. So what should we do with this information? My experiment had a few limitations. I didn't test every single flavored and unflavored sparkling water available on the market. And I would imagine that it's unlikely that you're gonna run around testing the pH of your beverage before you drink it. So you're not always gonna know the acidity of your sparkling water. Due to these uncertainties, I would recommend treating all sparkling water as being potentially erosive. While sparkling water certainly isn't as concerning as soda or citrus juice with respect to enamel erosion, this data indicates that sparkling water should still be consumed with some special considerations. But don't worry, that doesn't mean you shouldn't drink it. Try following some of these tips to help reduce the exposure of your teeth to potential enamel erosing acid. Aim to consume sparkling water with meals. When you're eating food, you'll produce more saliva, which will help buffer the acidity of the beverage. When you consume sparkling water, drink it all at once, as opposed to sipping on it slowly. Avoid swishing sparkling water in your mouth. Theoretically, it could be beneficial to drink through a straw to avoid contact with teeth. Avoid brushing your teeth within 30 minutes after drinking an acidic beverage because this could further degrade your enamel. It also isn't a good idea to completely replace drinking tap water with commercially available sparkling water. Many municipalities around the US add fluoride to their water, which can help strengthen the tooth enamel. If you want to enjoy fizzy bubbles and fluoridated water, then you could invest in an in-home beverage carbonator, such as a soda stream. My bottom line is that incorporating flavored or unflavored sparkling water into your lifestyle is a healthy choice, especially when it replaces sugar-sweetened beverages like soda. Keep these tips in mind to help avoid overexposing your teeth to potentially acidic beverages and you should be fine. As consumers, perhaps we could advocate for beverage labels to state the pH along with the ingredients. But overall, I welcome the variety of flavors available to help make healthy beverages more exciting. By the way, my favorite polar winter 2017 seasonal is winter citrus berry, and I'm really not into unicorn kisses. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. If you like what you're learning, please share and subscribe. Ring my bell to get alerts for new videos.